video is titled the most controversial video that you'll ever watch and of course as soon as I start making my video my dog wants more toys what do you need anyways whoops I dropped my phone still on yes we are okay I'm gonna plug my mic in this is live so this is uh, this is how it goes when it's live dogs start howling and crying it's because I labeled this the controversial video ever all right I actually forgot I have a mic on so I came unplugged so hopefully you're still with me all right so the most controversial video, why do I say that? Well, let me tell you a little story about how I got into envelope budgeting and why I use this envelope budgeting method. I owed almost $300,000 in debt at one time. And I'll explain how that all happened. Um, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um by Robert Kiyosaki and because of that book I decided it would be a great idea to get into uh, real estate so I bought a duplex in Edmonton my wife bought one side I bought the other side and we thought this is perfect because we can get some residual income coming in I was paying rent at the time in Calgary so I thought this is fantastic brand new place so we uh, had some renters move in and then I had a friend that would pop in from time to time just to make sure everything is cool so that was awesome uh, I believe the mortgage at the time was about I'm gonna say two hundred and seventy thousand dollars something like that so our payments were about two thousand dollars roughly a month and that was for each side just so you know and so we had renters that was cool and then uh, we did that for a few months and then I remember um, getting a phone call after about five six months of this uh, from the city police in Edmonton they called me on April Fools April 1st and when I got the phone call, they were like, uh, Mr. Landstrom, such and such address. Uh, we, we found a drug op in the basement. And so we had to condemn your home. We're just letting you know uh, that your home is officially condemned. And uh, so I did what anyone would do in that situation. I hung up the phone. Click. And then the phone rang again. And it was a police officer again constable so and so and he said uh, please do not hang up on me mr landstrom i know it's april 1st i wish this was a joke but it is not um we found a grow up in your basement so we condemned the home so obviously those uh renters were growing marijuana at the time um, i think it's in the process of becoming legal somehow um, but back then 100% illegal, can't do it. So what they did was they ripped apart my basement, ripped out the drywall, and put some kind of a venting system in it. I don't even know how they did it, but they moved my washer, dryer, all that kind of stuff, and basically gutted everything. So the officer did say that uh, if I wanted the home to get back on the market, I'd just have to get some renovating done. And so... I did that with some help from family, paid for that, put it back on the market, and then uh, wouldn't you know it, I couldn't sell it, the house was empty. And uh, just a little side note, these were the best renters that a person could ever have because they always paid on time. They didn't want any trouble. Now I know why, but... Um, they just, they paid always on time, cash, very friendly, all that kind of stuff, just unsuspecting. Anyways, gone. And anytime I tried to sell the home, 
I had to tell him that this used to be a grow up, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, couldn't sell the home, couldn't sell either side. So I was paying about $2,000 a month mortgage on both, and I was paying rent, and I was only making about $2,000 a month. So do the math. I needed minimum $6,000 just to survive. And I was only making two, and my wife wasn't working at the time. She might have been part-time. Anyways, so I had that stress. So what did I do? I had a bunch of credit cards, and I put everything on my credit cards, my rent. I put my uh, grocery bills, all that kind of stuff on my credit cards, and I had almost zero income because I was doing 100% commission sales at the time. And every time I missed a mortgage payment, um, I get dinged a $200, uh, what did they call it, processing fee. It was, I forget what it was called, but basically when your check bounces, the bank, the Scotia Bank would charge me $220 a pop, basically. Sometimes they would try two, three times in one day and I get $600 uh, a charge not counting interest as well, all this kind of stuff. So this went on for about a year, a year of, you know, probably once or twice a month, they'd try and take money. I'd call them, I'd say, there's no money. What can I do to pay? And they'd say, well, if you had $286,000, we can take care of this, done. I'm like, I don't have that much. Well, do you have $50,000, $60,000, and it was ridiculous. They wanted so much money up front just to take care of this, and I was getting backlogged on payments, all my payments, everything. So everything was going nuts, so I, I ended up owing over $50,000 in credit card debt. They were calling me every day. They even called me on a Saturday, if you can believe it. I had credit card companies calling me. Uh, they would pass it off to uh, collection agencies, they call me, call me at night, they call my wife, all this kind of stuff, every day for, this went on for, I'm going to say about two years, every day, phone calls, calling, hey, Mr. Landstrom, can you, uh, can you pay off this debt, and blah, 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 all this kind of stuff, and I'm like, uh, this is, this is an absolute nightmare, I wanted to jump off a bridge, seriously, I thought suicide was better, because it was too much pressure for me, too much. And we ended up reading a book that I thought was crazy at the time, Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey. I didn't have a regular income. My income was irregular. Talked about envelope budgeting, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I have nothing to budget. I have zero, so I can't do any of this stuff. And it was very tough because I was like all over the map. These people are calling me. And then finally, um, just reading some of the articles that Dave Ramsey wrote and a few others about being able to negotiate. And uh, there was one gentleman that I heard about, and it was uh, Grant Cardone. And he talked about, uh, I read a couple of his books, Sell or Be Sold, uh, Be Average or Be Obsessed, and the 10X. And he said, just renegotiate. And uh, so I thought, that's, that's exactly what I'll do, is renegotiate. So whenever a credit card company would call me, they'd ask me for ten, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 up front. I would basically say, I can give you like a thousand bucks today. I can give you a thousand bucks, but I need a letter saying that you're going to write it off. And they would say, no, you owe us $20,000. They'd hang up, they'd be mad all this kind of stuff and this went on for a little while and uh, it's funny because they ended up some of them negotiated we negotiate all the way down to like from twenty thousand dollars down to a thousand bucks and then I would clear it up I cleared up oh Wells Fargo credit card I had something through future shop and I was getting hit with 30 percent interest every single month and it was nuts so I negotiated down on that and paid that off, paid a Capital One card and a few other ones. So the rest I just left, honest honest to God. I just said, forget it. I'm not, I unplugged my phone and I said, I'm not dealing with you guys. The collectors were calling me. So I owed about three or four credit cards. It was like $40,000, something like that. And I just said, no, I'm not paying. I'm not making one payment. 
uh, here's where the controversy begins. I said no to the credit card companies because, for example, I had, and this is my insane rationale back then, I wouldn't do this today, but back then, I paid about a thousand dollars for a TV. Hey, stop. I paid a thousand bucks for a TV. My payments were like a hundred bucks or 150, 200 bucks every month. So I paid that off. I paid 150 bucks over a period of five years. So do the math. Thousand dollars, you're paying 150 bucks for five years. Five years. And I ended up owing about $1,500 for that TV to Wells Fargo. So do the math. Do the freaking math. I paid my debt. But because I was doing the minimum payments, $50, because that's what they said you could do. I was doing that, so it went from $100, and then it went down to $50 a month, because they said, I actually think it was like $25 to $50, somewhere in that, the minimum payment. So I did. I shrunk it down to the minimum, and it took me five years And I was still, I was actually behind the eight ball because my debt actually increased at 30% every month when you're doing the minimum payments, it skyrocketed. So I managed to pay that off. And then there are other credit card companies that like I had little things on there and I was getting dinged. And over a period of five, six years, it just snowballed. It got, it got crazy. So by the time this mortgage crisis happened to me, I was in over my head and I just said, no, sorry, I'm not paying you guys. I have enough money for food and groceries. I'm not paying anybody a nickel. And the banks were calling me saying I owed them almost $300,000. I owed all this back pay, penalties, all this kind of stuff was nuts. So I said, I don't have any money for that. They're like, how much can you come up with? I said, I don't know. I don't know. I really, honestly, I don't know. I can give you like maybe $2,000. And again, I had zero savings. They said, if you can come up with $50,000, we'll write this off. So from 200 and some thousand, almost $300,000, they said, if you can come up with 50, I said, no, I can't do that. I can't come up with 50. Can you call your family? Can you do anyone? I said, no, can't do that. Credit card companies calling me. I said, no, you're getting zero. And then the bank said, hey, can you do this? Finally, finally, we negotiated down to $18,000. And I said, I can get you that. So bug family, friends, that kind of stuff. I paid $18,000, which basically meant that they left me alone, gave the keys back, lost both homes, and the bank went away. They never called me anymore. They wrote down that I had paid it in full. Debt was taken care of. But it stayed on the books for another six years, which is amazing. <clears throat> so even though it was paid off, all that stuff, it still stays because it was foreclosed. So that was on there. My credit cards were on there for six years as well. Now, I didn't go bankrupt. I just said, I'm not paying you guys. So, which is very interesting because the credit card companies are what you call non-secure debt. The only companies, the only business that can come after you is a bank. And they were attaching my bank account. They would take all my money. Actually, no, that's not true. They would take out the money, but they could only take out whatever the mortgage was. So, if there's money, they would try a couple of times, but you can call them and stop it and just tell them. Say, hey, hold off for a day, whatever it is. But the government, the government could attach your your account. And because I owed taxes, they would take a whole paycheck, boom, gone. And I'd have no money for groceries, nothing. The government took their money first. That's what woke me up to this whole mess. I went, this is crazy. The credit card companies couldn't do it, but the government could. So I made that a priority to pay the government. And the credit card companies went away with all the collection agencies. They just went away. They got tired of calling me and they stopped. So let that be a little bit of a lesson to you. Yeah, you can get in over your head with credit cards and all that kind of stuff. But it's not the end of the world. You can negotiate. That's my whole point with credit cards. 
If you're owing thousands of dollars on credit cards, I don't know how it is in the U.S., but they cannot attach your bank account in Canada. So I would say, until you could figure out a way to survive, stop paying those credit card companies. It's going to hurt you for at least six years. It's going to hurt you, but it won't kill you. It's not going to kill you. What could kill you is the government attaching your bank account and taking all your money out. So what I had to do is I actually move, I had to move around a couple of different banks because I didn't want them taking all my money in one shot. So I finally made a deal with the Canadian government and we're able to do a payment plan and they are very reasonable, very good, but you couldn't miss a payment. That was very important. You couldn't miss anything. So if taking care of all that stuff, that's done. Um, because it was about six years later and I built up my credit again, um, I now have five credit cards and they're all at zero balance because I pay them with an app. I have an app now that if I have money in the bank, I go out and I buy something that I've allocated because of this envelope budgeting method. I turn around and pay it back right away. We can also travel now anywhere because I don't have prepaid credit cards which sucked so I didn't have any money I didn't have any cash and if you use cash hotels will refuse you so it was an absolute nightmare like it or not that's what happened to me did I use wisdom 99% of the time no I was very foolish I was young naive stupid all that kind of stuff but I survived I got out of it uh, right now we pay rent on our house and uh, we live in a pretty nice house. Uh, we are saving up for a condo as once our kids move out. We don't need a big house like this. But if you, if you study some of the financial uh, people, gurus today, a lot of them are saying that it may not be the best idea right now today to buy a house. That's not to say you can't get one later, but you might be in a better place just to rent. So that's just, I'm just throwing that out there because there's so much pressure to buy a home, so much pressure. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm spending all my energy on doing a good job at work, making sure that that's a priority, making sure that I have steady income, which I do, and my work is very happy with what I do, the managers, everything like that, so it's good. So stabilize that. That's my plan. Have that stabilized. And I've been doing that now for three years. And then just stay out of debt. And the only way that we can do that is if we stick together with a plan and do this envelope budgeting. And it is a hybrid between credit cards. But we just, we don't spend foolishly on our credit cards. If we plan something with our envelopes, we allocate that cash to those envelopes and then if we use our credit card we have the cash so that's the important thing and you have to both be on the same page so I hope that makes sense I know it sounds a little bit crazy even when I think about it like how did I get into that but I was buying roller blades I was buying stereo systems TVs all this kind of stuff and I had no budget I had nothing so now I have a budget for things and you know, for vacation right now, because that's a priority for us to take some time off. You notice that I don't have a budget for TV right now. That could be under miscellaneous, but I, I have like a 42-inch TV. It's pretty good. I have friends or family that has bigger TVs. No problem. Go over there and watch a movie. Have fun, that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to get in my, over my head again. So I've learned that lesson, but it's been hard. Now my credit score is about 709 it's in good standing. I'm at about 1% uh, usage when it comes to my credit cards. Because really, if you stay within 1% to 3%, you're fine. And I always pay my credit cards off. Like I mentioned in other videos, I make probably oh, at least a half a dozen payments every single month. Because if I'm making a transaction, whatever it is, I just use my app and I put it back on the credit card. Or I put it back, I use the money from my bank account onto the credit card and I make sure it's at zero all the time. Within 48 hours, the credit card will be back at zero. I don't care. I just make it zero. I don't care if people tell you that you need 
to build up some credit by having a balance on your credit cards, BS. You need your credit cards at zero because I know it's a nightmare on the other side and you get hit with interest. So make sure that your credit cards are at zero. And yes, Dave Ramsey is absolutely right. They will be a nightmare for you if you don't, if you don't pay off your credit cards. But if you're in deep, you're so far that basically the credit card companies are calling you, you can negotiate with them. And that's what I would encourage you. I wish I had done that earlier uh, with my first few credit cards to just negotiate because they will, they will come down to pennies on the dollar. It's actually amazing. And this was all about 2009 when everybody was going under. All the credit card companies and Citibank and all this stuff we're getting people were getting bailouts like companies all this kind of stuff and i'm like that's it i'm stopping because this is a nightmare people are getting away with stuff and in my head back then i felt like i had paid everything that i had owed even though i was behind the interest was just killing me 30 percent every single month and the on the statement they're saying as long as you pay your minimum payment you're okay and which was wrong Paying minimum is not going to get you out of debt. You got to clear up your credit cards as fast as you can. And now, like I use Capital One, they I have a few credit cards with them, and I have a pretty good relationship with them because if I have a question or anything, I just call them up right away, and they, you know, I I ask them. I said, "How is my?" credit card rating all this kind of stuff and they they look up my account and they're like you are in great standing awesome good job all this kind of stuff so i have that relationship right now with my credit cards and i'm trying to do my best to budget save up have fun at the same time but i'm telling you that it is possible to get out of your mess they're not gonna kill you that's the biggest thing. I felt like, like I said, I felt like jumping off a bridge. When you get phone calls of people harassing you every single day saying you need to pay, no, no. You just, just say no. You can come up with the plan, but the plan has to be on your terms. Don't let anybody else boss you around. If it's friends, family, banks, whatever it is, you know what's best for your family. So you take care of your family first and don't get into that nightmare. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you've appreciated this video and it is controversial because everybody will say, pay your debt, pay your debt, pay your debt. I understand it. I understand it. But when you're in it, it is very difficult to think clearly. It is very difficult. And when you're thinking suicidal thoughts and you're thinking that jumping off a bridge is better and leaving your family destitute without you, without income or anything like that, when you think that is a better option than listening to the people on the phone yell at you, that's a tough place. It's a very tough place. And that's where I was at. I was depressed clinically for a while until I just got the courage and I said, no, no. Just, no, you're not going to bully me around. And it's important to understand that there's secured debt and then there's unsecured. Unsecured is credit cards from banks, from uh, companies like the Bay, all that. That's all unsecured. They can't hurt you. All they can do is hurt your credit score. Government and banks, if you screw with them, they can hurt you. They could ta attach your account. They could take money out. So my advice to you is make sure that you always put money aside for whatever it is. If it's banks, you, if it's for government, make sure you pay that. Student loans are another thing that could be a nightmare. I don't have any more student loans. It took me forever to pay those off. I negotiated a deal with the, student, with the, the Canadian government because I owed some student loans. That's all done with, it's all dealt with, I'm in good standing, etc. But, so those three things, banks, government, student loans can hurt you. 
Um, I don't mean physically, mentally, they could hurt you because they could take your money out. And you could starve and they don't care. Partially because you put yourself in that situation, I get it. But sometimes circumstances happen where they're just because of greed, selfishness, whatever it is, it gets out of control real fast. But if you can keep your head on and you can just really think about it and go, you know what? I am not going to die because of this. I can make it through. When I owed over $300,000 in debt, I thought my life was over. And it is not over. I have a great relationship with my landlord. An unbelievable relationship. It's always like, hey, why don't you come over to my house, visit, let's go motorbike ride, let's, all this kind of stuff. So he's treated me really, really well. So, but that comes with just sticking to your plan and not letting anybody persuade you into doing something else, something drastic. So take care of your family first. Make sure you don't get into crazy amounts that if, if credit cards are tough for you because you're not making enough income, then I would say stay away from it. But because we have, both my wife and I have a regular income, makes it easier. And if you want to build your, your credit back up, in Canada, you need a credit score. You need a decent credit, credit score. Um, I would suggest using Capital One. They've been very good to me. They had a, a credit building credit card that I had. And basically, uh, they gave me a thousand bucks to start off with. And it was originally supposed to be a prepaid where uh, you could use it the same way, Visa, MasterCard, all that kind of stuff, but, but you actually put a thousand bucks on the credit card, but for some reason they didn't do that with me. Uh, they, they gave me a thousand dollars and I just started, kept it at a zero balance, used the credit card for about six months. And then they gave me a couple more credit cards. And like I said, I have over 30000 available to me of credit card. Will I need all that? No, I don't. But it's nice to have it because on the other side of it, psychologically, the idea that you just have credit cards and you're not relying on your daughters, your kids, your son, your relatives for a credit card just to get a rental, um, like renting a car, or getting a hotel room you can depend on yourself and there's something to be said that I actually when I got my credit card I actually felt like a human being which is strange I know I get it it goes against everything anyone believes but to have a credit card and to have a bank trust you enough with that credit card means a lot to me now because I broke that trust at one time so I hope this helps and yeah, this, this video is labeled the most controversial because you won't hear this all the time. You won't hear people say, stop making payments. If it's going to bury you, stop making the payments. So I hope you can understand my heart behind it, that it can be a nightmare, but you can get through this nightmare and you can wake up. We are on the other side of it. No more phone calls. Nobody calls us. The only phone calls we get is from credit card companies asking us if we want another credit card. Hey, whatever works. So there you go. So there's my uh, controversial video for today. And uh, feel free to comment if this helps. Let me know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Envelope Budgeting Method. Finally got the URL for it. Uh, with regards to YouTube because they saw that I have like 10,000 views now plus so I'm able to change my URR from 00AB-1764 whatever now it just says envelope budgeting method there we go so yeah so my uh, time is up and thanks for watching this video I appreciate it